So could I just, in the last um, 10 minutes, maybe invite any thoughts on other people's points, the, 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 the issue of order from chaos, the issue of evidence, the issue of buzzing, you know, the issue of tools, and the issue of the continuum? Anybody, any thoughts? I, I think, <laughs> to me, the thing that we haven't <clears throat> spoken straightly about and yet is there and is crucial to this kind of day is the relationship that's at the back of this. So part of the experience that Guy is mentioning about the buzzingness for anybody in a band or a choir or doing these kinds of things is the doing of it together takes you far further than you could on your own. Yes. And the key thing, you know, it, it, it's not just in music therapy that you leave somebody there on their own with some bits and pieces mm -hmm. that they can bang around with. There is a therapist there who can help the person build a relationship with them and they do things together. And Julie describes very well the, the depressed person who after some sessions then says, please do this with me and together we will make the music. And it's that together, it's that relationship that's the therapeutic component, yeah. whether the therapeutic component for the guys who are well but can even be better mm. and have a, a buzzing time, or the person who's really disturbed and needs that relationship to bring them to health. So the relationship with the person to me is key. Thank you. Can I just build on that? I mean, from the research in pleasure, which obviously I've taken great part in, shows that probably the greatest pleasure in life is to be with other people. Jean-Paul Sartre said it the other way. He said, l'enfer c'est l'autre, hell is the other. But of course, there's a flip side to that. And that flip side, I think, is really where a lot of creativity, a lot of joy, a lot of pleasure can be taken and should be taken. Yes. Absolutely, the, the harking back to one of my great collaborators, Colin Trevatham. Uh, the idea of this intersubjectivity, um, the idea of actually art being born, and music in particular being born out of our need to find an empathetic communication prior to language, and probably evolutionary terms, very likely, um, uh, as we dis distinguish in studying motherese, the sounds and melodies that mothers make to children. Um, very, very clear that we have, we have an evolving template of an intensely social thing where sound is, is, is the way that we can look inside the feelings of somebody else. And relating this directly to war, um, people don't, soldiers, don't have um, a language which they can use to deal with the things that suddenly hit them. So in the aftermath of an of a IED or something, um, the words aren't there. And of course, if you can't get it out somehow, it's going to stay within you and it's going to rot. So um, this is why chaplains, when a war comes along, become one of the most important people in a military unit, whether or not you believe in anything, because they have this language. It's a different set of words which provides comfort whether you believe or not. They become very important people. And I think music does exactly the same thing. It's a, it's a different language which gives you the ability to express things that you, you couldn't put into words. Yeah, so I just wanted something that springs to mind, and I think that's so true. I think music can put you into, as was mentioned earlier by a few people, into a safe place, can't it? We were in Bosnia with a former band uh, in 2000, 2001, and the, uh, the, the town we were in escapes me. But I was saying to somebody earlier that um, at the time I was a bandmaster, and I don't know why, but before we left the UK, I grabbed a bag of old Christmas cards from the band. And on the front cover, it was a beautiful picture of our band in beautiful red tunics and plumes, and we looked absolutely fantastic. And uh, although not that good, because I wasn't on the front cover, but, <laughs> but I had this bag of cards, and the band were playing in front of me. And it was the first time that a band had been taken into this town. People were very scared to come out. And the band started to play, and I sat on the wall in front, and I could see a little boy right down the other end, and I just started looking in my bag. And he gradually came along, and I sort of pointed, and he took out a card and ran off, and I thought, well, that's it. I'm not seeing him again. But interestingly enough, he started bringing all his little friends along then, you see. And with, as I said to somebody earlier, with the children come the parents. 
And as we were talking about, I think, in Northern Ireland, about changing and breaking a cycle, isn't it? And it's, it's, it's ch being able to change um, or, or break a cycle so that the next generation don't think that is the here and now. It isn't the here and now. And, and I think the music that we were able to provide, I don't know whether it's therapeutic, but it certainly took people into a safe environment. The children ended up taking every single Christmas card because it was like the most amazing gift they could have been given. I think about doing that in the UK, and they'd have gone, whatever, what, it's last year's Christmas card, you know. But for them, it was this most amazing thing, and it was the music that had enabled um, that coming together and the parents coming out into the centre of the town with their children for us. I think it's such a crucial factor. Um, working, having worked alongside the army in various situations, um, sometimes I was sorry for my colleagues in the army who, uh, in horrible circumstances, um, just had to deal with it, whereas I could go and work with children uh, um, and heal myself immediately. Uh, and I always felt a bit sad about that, but then also, at the other side of it, when on the occasions we have been able to work uh, with the army, like the Green Jackets, working with us, uh, with children in the community, it felt so natural and good. Uh, and far be it from me, it's not my position to do that, but uh, there would be an agenda for the army here in a kind of creative social outreach uh, that could be tremendously beneficial in many places and, and, and tremendous for soldiers themselves, able in a tough situation, having to watch an awful lot of bad things happen, maybe get out there and do something extremely constructive, uh, which people have been superbly good at when I've had the chance to work with them. So just a thought mm. for things. Yes, John. Um, just to return to my role on this committee of being the crusty academic, I think that several different things are being talked about here, and, and they're all very, very valid things, but they're different things. So we're, we are now talking about the benefits of music, and that's absolutely fine, but a lot of the things that we heard today didn't involve much creativity on the part of those who were receiving whatever it was that they were receiving as therapeutic or input. So, for example, the people who were being helped to sleep better by mu music were exercising no creativity at all. They were simply passive recipients of the music. And that did them good too. But if the question is, is creativity of value, then we have to look just at those projects where the participants were actually invited to, to make music. So just to be a little bit clear that we're not uh, lending a benefit from one kind of activity mm -hmm. to another just by being a bit sloppy with our language. Um, absolutely. Though there are continuities here. I mean, uh, for example, work having worked with this you know, sleep and relaxation issue, um, there is a continuity also between active creative dialogue and listening. I mean, we, we, we try to create programs that move across through that spectrum. Sorry. And of course, there is a creativity in listening as well if it's. Um if, if the music you're listening to is stimulating you and challenging you and you're getting into it and you're getting the buzz, then in fact you are taking part. Um, the empathy of, you know, you know, even in a rock band where you're playing very, very loudly, if you're in front of a crowd, you feel it and you play differently. You play different notes. You play the whole thing completely differently to when you're in a studio. So I, I do think that listening is contributing very much to music. As we've just got five minutes, could I uh, see if there's a question from... Yes. So we've just got five minutes, so if it can be concise, that would be good. Yeah. Well, yes, very quick. It's um, been a fascinating day, as I anticipated it would be. Um, I'm actually going to pass on something. It's not so much a question, it's actually a debate, which I attended, I think it was in May, at the Royal Festival Hall, and it was called Is Talent Enough? And it was arranged by this trust called Orletti Bertoni Trust. And it was about musicians and young musicians and what you needed to actually be able to uh, make your way in the professional world. It was introduced, although she was not there, on film by Masuku Yoshida, the famous pianist. And I just wanted to pass on a couple of things which she said, because she was talking about certain qualities that you needed. And it was interesting um, that, uh, sorry, you said about the spectrum and people being valid, whichever, whether they're professionals or whether they are people with no knowledge about music. Because what two of the things that she said, which really struck a chord with me, and things I hadn't really thought about, was that she said that music was actually an expression of character. Character in the sense of the core of who you are, 
and also musicians, music is all about expressing the self. And the thing about people and culture and words and language and countries and nationalities and war is the fact that words and culture often get in the way. So music has the potential to actually communicate at a very elemental level and I just wish it was used more often. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Thank you very much. Good. On those inspiring words, uh, I wish we'll probably conclude this panel. Thank you very, very much, uh, gentlemen. Uh, and thank you, uh, everybody else, for uh, uh, being such a lovely audience, as the Beatles once said, we'll like to take you home with us. And uh, 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 we'll, uh, we'll see you again sometime. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>